Let's do some spring cleaning. I have boxes of swatches, works in progress, and I think we can learn some lessons about swatching, color ideas, and maybe even some design tips by going through and organizing and spring cleaning all my abandoned projects and experiments. So let's see if we can find some treasures. I have all these experiments and little abandoned trials, and some of these are like almost finished shawls that I need to discuss with you if I should finish them or should I transform them into something else. But let's just dive in and see what we can find. Some of these were shawls that I started and was really, really excited about, but I've worked a lot with color and I'm pretty confident with color, but sometimes there's even experiments that I make and I just don't love or they might be beautiful, but for me, they're just not working for what I want them to say. So this was one of those color experiments that I loved the colors, but I found that this experiment was like a, a clash between texture and the color, where the details, you see those cool cables, they're just like getting lost with the busy stripes. So it just wasn't quite as crisp and clear as I wanted. So I completely abandoned this whole shawl design idea. I've recycled some elements, so I, I always look at something as never a waste of time, a swatch, or a project, even if it doesn't work out, it always teaches you something. It gives you a lesson that those colors don't look good together for you in that stitch pattern, or maybe the texture's too busy for the colors. So this I learned a lot about color and texture and types of contrast that just didn't jump out enough for me, but I did recycle this cable idea and it became the knit provisation shawl. That became a, a worsted weight project later on, so I recycled a little bit. Whenever I'm writing down and uh, experimenting with these shawl ideas, I write down what I'm doing as I go, so even if it doesn't work out, I have a documentation of the process and I could recycle some of the ideas and refine them a bit later which is what I did to this. But for now, it's going in the naughty pile and maybe I'll repurpose it and turn it into a little puppy poncho or something for brioche. We'll see. Okay, let's look at, we've got some swatches, some more experiments. Sometimes when I'm designing new projects, I'll do little mini shawls or try different shapes and apply them with color. So this was a fun little short row experiment with some short row wedges, and I think this eventually became the shawlography shawl. This was one of my first trials. But I love that all of these are just little brainstorms of ideas, and you off often see the final design or the final project, but that's not usually where things start. They usually start with some sketches, or some experiments, or some failed shawls that teach you a lesson or two to get you to that next step in your knitting. But to me, it's never a waste. It's all about the fun and playfulness of trying new things. This eventually became the Painting Columns shawl, but this was the actual beginning of the shawl. But as I was knitting it, I just got a bit tired of the color combination. It's really fun, but I was excited about the design and I restarted it with the final colors that you saw in the Painting Columns shawl pattern. So now it's a little mini abandoned shawl. But now that I have so many of these, I think I could sew them all together and make them into something colorful and representative of that idea of process, embracing the journey. Every step takes you to that next landing point in your life and in your knitting, and it always teaches you something. But it's fun to have this like textile scrapbook of ideas. So this is what I do sometimes with all my experiments. You can crochet or sew them all together. This used to be around like a big column, and now it's turning into this huge blanket of these swatches. This was the beginning of the slip stravaganza blanket and the shawl project. I was playing with all these slip stitches. This is like a half shawl that just, yeah, I love the colors and I would finish it, but sometimes you just get distracted and move on to other projects, other colors. So I don't let myself stress out about not finishing things. I embrace that work in progress lifestyle, always knitting what you're in the mood for and what you're craving. And if you're just not craving it quite as much anymore, it's okay to start something fresh. 
and it's all about how one thing leads to another, following those cravings. But I'd never, I didn't want to rip this out because I thought it was just such a beautiful color story, and maybe I'll recycle this type of color idea later for a future sweater. Maybe Stitch, my dog Stitch, maybe she needs a little pastel princess sweater in these creamy, frosty neutrals. All right, so that's really fun to sew things together. Let's see if I can find any other failed experiments. Ooh, oh, this became, this is a tool I use sometimes for designing. This is like a bound off mini shawl. And sometimes I'll make mini versions of my designs as I'm coming up with the shaping. And this had this beautiful att attached border to it. And what I noticed when I was working with this border, that the wingspan was going off in one line, but then when I did this border, the wingspan edge became like a little broken wingtip. So I learned that lesson from this mini shawl, and then I added some short rows to the final design to help uh, elongate the wingspan edge more seamlessly. So this was a nice lesson to learn that shaping lesson for myself in a miniature form, rather than learning it for myself in the big final shawl form and wasting more time in the knitting process. So you can work through the stumbling blocks and develop those design ideas in a short time span with the mini shawl, rather than making that mistake when you have 800 stitches on your needle and wishing you knew that lesson earlier. So that little swatch became the Painting Rainbows shawl. That's this one right here with mohair. It's such a beautiful flowing shape with a main color of wool striped with all of these mohair color pops. It's like a painter's palette of fluffy mohair. So this is a really simple shawl, but the border had a little bit of construction going on with it. And that mini shawl helped me realize what to do for the border. Okay, what else do we have here? We have some more beginnings. This was actually the very beginning of my fiery foliage shawl. And once I cast on and the leaf motif was flowing into that shaped edge, I was like, okay, that's the final shawl. Let me cast on the real thing. I don't need to play anymore. I know what I'm doing. So this helped me just get confident with the shaping mixed with that big lace stitch pattern. So that was a fun one. Ooh, what do we have here? This is actually a completed shawl that never became a design. So what does that look like? Why did I not release this pattern? Ooh, that's pretty. So this is with a self-striping yarn and it has a main color with all these slip stitch polka dots but I think I still have this pattern on my computer. I might need to just block it again and see if that helps, because I didn't uh, quite like some of the waviness that happened. Like whenever you hold the shawl out flat, it doesn't quite lay flat. There's a little bit of puckering poofing that happens, but I don't know if that's because I haven't really fully blocked it yet, or if there was a shaping issue where I need to increase sooner. So sometimes even when I'm confident with a final pattern, when I see the finished thing, sometimes I look at it and go, could it be a little better? Or did I make all the right shaping choices? And usually I say, yeah. <laughs> usually I'm pretty confident and go, yeah, it's okay. But sometimes I need to take a step back or take a few days of a break and go, hmm. I don't think I need to rush this. Maybe I need to refine it a little bit. But this one, I really don't know yet. I'm gonna give it another block and see if that fixes it. Cause sometimes things just need to be soaked and wet blocked properly for the wavy motifs to smooth out. I think that's the case with this one, but we're gonna see. I think it's a shame not to have this be a pattern. It's kind of like my Suriously Holy shawl that's in brioche, but I wanted to make a version of that shawl for people that didn't want a brioche. So this is more with slip stitches, but I need to revisit this and see if I can still find that pattern on my computer. Cause I think it's gonna work with the blocking. It's too good to let go. Okay, that was a treasure. That was mixed up with all these swatches. Some of these are swatches for workshops I film. Oh, there's a mitten. I didn't knit that. How did that get in there? Somebody must've lost their mitten from the shop or something. Or maybe these are Malia's mittens. We'll see, do they fit me? Oh, I think, yeah, these must, must be somebody else's. They're a little small. Okay, we've got some more swatches. These are teeny tiny. So I always say I don't like swatches, but there's quite a few swatches in here, 
but I think my type of swatching is baby swatching. I usually stop really, really early, where when you should do like a full swatch to see the idea, check your gauge, sometimes I just go, mm, okay, that's what the colors look like, that's the shape, let's start the real thing. So I have lots of these itty bitty. They're just to get an idea and get comfortable if there's a new stitch pattern. And here's some more little baby shawls. I developed these for my workshop called Design Your Own Top-Down Shawl. So if you like this whole world of trial and experimenting with shapes and colors, I made a whole Design Your Own Top-Down Shawl workshop where I walk you through all the shaping principles to create your own shawl shapes. So you use my basic formulas to build the top-down shawls, and then there's lots of lessons on how to make your own semicircular shawl formulas, and also lessons on how to mix in color with texture to your shawl shape experiments. So these are some little painting bricks, color samples. I knitted these for the painting shawls book. I wanted to show how different one design could look depending on your main color and contrast color accents. And I think this needs to be a whole project. Maybe a painting bricks jacket or something would be really cool. <gasps> this on the sleeve. Yeah, I actually have, oh, let me show you one thing. I have this big jacket. Oh, this hasn't become a pattern yet, but maybe in the future. This is, this is a big swatch, okay? <laughs> this is a, was gonna be a painting bricks jacket, but I need to work on the shaping a little bit. But this is just an example of, sometimes I'll knit a full garment, a full shawl, but there might be some qualities about it that just aren't quite the proportions I'm aiming for. Or I think this one, I didn't write down what I did as I went as well, so. I need to re-knit it again. And I think this is more of a worsted weight gauge, and I want the final pattern to be a little thinner for a DK weight gauge. Not, not quite as bulky, but I'm real happy with the overall vibe of it, but it needs a little more reworking. But I've made dozens of things since then, so that idea is on pause. Maybe you'll see that in 10 years, or maybe next month. We'll see, we'll see when I get to it. All right, what other lessons can we learn? This was the shawl swatch I made before designing the final pattern of this piece. So this is when I'm playing with lots of colors and a trick I use when I'm swatching or designing new shawl ideas is a lot of my first experiments work with many, many colors because for me, color is a very motivating and inspiring way to start a new project. So if I'm playing with a new idea, I won't just do it with one color, but I, I work with lots of colors because that gets me excited to keep on going. What's gonna happen if I add a red pop? So that's a fun way to work with lots of your stash and leftovers. So if you wanna design or create your own colorful experiments, I really recommend just going bold and brave in your first experiments with lots of colors because I find that that excites you and triggers more ideas as you're playing with the shaping techniques. But pretty wild how this became this. Two totally different things, but it's just a part of the process and of the journey. Whenever you play with one idea, you can always take the colors down or expand the color palette even brighter the next time. So it's all about how one thing leads to another. I don't know what that is. Okay, what's this? Oh, here's another mini shawl. This became the striped vortex shawl. And this is another trick I use when I'm designing and swatching, playing with new stitches, is I do them on thicker yarn. If you're playing with a new stitch pattern and a new shaping technique, it can be quite overwhelming to learn all those things with the itty bitty fingering weight yarn. So you can get to see your work faster and easier on your hands. It's quicker to see a bigger shape with thicker yarn. So I'll sometimes do these prototype experiments of shawls with a bigger yarn. So it's just, it grows faster. You see the construction idea, but it doesn't take quite as long to see a big shape than with itty bitty fingering weight yarn. But eventually this pattern became a three color version shawl with three colors of fingering weight. This was for one of our last yarn along 
uh, shawl and pattern clubs that I do every summer. The Striped Vortex was like two or three years ago, I think, and we're getting ready for our next summer club. So some of these ideas, I wonder if we'll find any swatches that are going to become into this year's yarn along theme. So a lot of these yarn along designs, I experiment with lots of new stitches or some fun new shaping techniques, and then you get to discover them for three months in the summer. It's a West Knits Shawl Club where you get three patterns and every single month, May, June, and July, you get a surprise pattern, custom colors dyed just for the project. And it's a really fun way to, for me to share the, the whole creative process about designing. And it's fascinating to get to share these colors designed specifically for the design. So you really get that sense of the colors I'm craving and that perfect blend of beautiful colors meeting a gorgeous stitch pattern for these surprise packages that show up on your doorstep. So this was one of the previous YAL designs, and signups are going on now for the next YAL season for this summer. So you can check all those out. Those are all at stephenandpenelope.com for the YAL signups. Okay, what do we have here? This is an almost finished slip extravaganza shawl, and I, I just needed to persevere and do a few more stripes for the border, but I did not. There was a needle in this project that I wanted, and so I just took it out and, yeah, <laughs> I needed to work on something else. Yeah, I've got a lot of needles, but never the right size. Even if I have 20 needles of the same size, it's nev there's never a free one. So I decided this taught me a lesson. This was part of my pattern writing process for Slip Stravaganza, and then I knitted it, it again with the final yarns. But thank you for all the lessons you taught me. And I'm really happy that you're an uh, unfinished jellyfish now. Yeah, I think it's just so beautiful. And I like still having these things around, reminding me so myself that I'm not perfect. I don't always finish things. And that's part of my attitude and my lifestyle with knitting. It's not all about the finished process. It's fun to wear them, those finished projects, and see them in person. But it's also about the creativity and the attitude of learning new things and also letting go. And sometimes part of letting go is letting go of those things that just weren't meant to be finished. Just say thank you and move on. It's all okay. It's all part of the journey. Okay, what else do we have? Some almost finished projects. I'm keeping all of these. I think I could sew some of these together into a big blanket. But there might be some I finish. Okay, this to me is like a failed experiment but maybe I just didn't go long enough. It has all these short rows to it. Really, really fun. I loved the colors, but I think it just needed something in the middle. Just something about that symmetry wasn't quite speaking to me in the moment, but maybe I need to revisit this and do something funky in the center because it was starting to get really, really long, kind of like phoenix wings, little angel wings which is cool, but I wasn't getting much in the middle, and then I just wasn't inspired to experiment any further. So this was a, mm, a burst of momentum that halted to a stop. And I, I think because I started something with other colors. Okay, this is something I wanna come back to, but I need to learn more. This was an experiment of stacked stitches, and this was, what was this? This was maybe a previous mystery knit-along shawl experiment, but it didn't make it into the mystery knit-along season. So when I'm designing my mystery shawls, those are my opportunity to really try daring new techniques and color combinations and really cool construction methods. So I always try to teach myself something new when I'm designing mystery shawls, but uh, this one needed a bit more research. I need to get more comfortable with stacked stitches and how I can manipulate them. So I don't know, maybe you'll see this in a future mystery design or a variation of it. I don't know, I don't know. Okay, let's do a few more swatches. Oh, we've got Brioche's Pupography Dog Sweater. Ooh, another started shawl. This was the Contrast Blast Shawl. I have lots of mini shawls. Maybe I need to hang them all up and make like a little bunting. You can, yeah, you can use everything you've got around you. Everything has a purpose, except for this. I don't know what I can do with that. Maybe, maybe some little dog accent. I could crochet onto that. I don't know. Sorry, Brioche. <laughs> he has to wear all my 
experiments. This was my shawlography year of the mystery shawl, and I wrote a recipe for this on my Ravelry project page. It turned into a little pupography dog sweater for brioche. It was a uh, the same beginning as Shawlography, and it uses all the same stitches. So you can see this on my Ravelry project page called Pupography. So if you want to make one of these for your little Frenchie or your Dachshund or even a medium-sized dog could rock all these fun stitches. Okay, what else? Let's maybe find something embarrassing. Let's see, what do we got? Failed shawls, more swatches. Oh, this was my first time playing with the dip stitches. I was trying to find how I wanted to work with dip stitches and it started off a little bit messy and then you can see later on it gets a little bit more clear. It's a little bit more bumpy and then you can really see the idea start to get more refined the further you work. And that's always a life lesson too that the very first time you try something there's always going to be some bumps in the road. It's never going to be perfect the first time and if it is then congratulations, you're great, okay? But that's not normal. You gotta go through the trials, experiment, have some growth, and it means it takes time, it takes patience, it takes a bit of determination to stick with it, but it's worth it in the end because you always learn and get more comfortable and confident along that process. So, and then I designed like 15 dip stitch projects and <laughs> couldn't get enough. And this was one of the failed dip stitch projects. Or not failed, it could be cool, but it started to get a little more costumey than I wanted. I love this idea for a sleeve, and I love yellow, and then I realized I was making a pineapple. And I, it, that, that's great, but that's not what I wanted for this. So maybe I'll revisit this idea with other colors so that when I wear it proudly, I don't get mistaken for a pineapple accidentally. That's great if you're going for that, but I didn't want to say that with this garment. So, really cool. Maybe I'll make a little, maybe it could be a pineapple cozy, a sweater for your pineapple. I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, that was a lot of surprising details that I forgot I made. So it's very confronting when you dig out all those boxes and bins from your yarn closets or yarn rooms, but it's springtime, which is not a time to th always throw everything out, but it could be a time just to organize what you have and remind yourself to stop things and not be guilty about the projects you didn't finish. It's okay to stop some projects, but it's also the time to confront your reality and go, am I going to finish those 47 shawls? Maybe not. So maybe just pick seven of your favorite ones that you think you might come back to again and recycle the yarn or do a crochet bind off to some of those works in progress and you could sew them all together into a, a beautiful representation of learning lessons and adventurous playfulness and remind yourself that it's not about the finished project it's all about the process how one thing connects and leads to another and you wouldn't be where you are today unless you gave yourself that permission to play, try new things, and you're always going to learn and gain confidence along the way. So I'm going to fold up and organize these. I don't think I'm going to throw too much out this season, actually. Maybe just recycle a little bit of yarn. I'm going to block this big shawl and see if it's going to work out. And then just organize my swatches and then make a plan to start crocheting and maybe making some fun uh, dog sweater collages from all my mini... Uh, swatch, uh, mo like those little tiny swatches that, uh, yeah, didn't really become a finished shawl, but yeah, those teeny tiny ones. Ooh, make these little patchwork pup ponchos, dog sweaters. I think that's going to be my spring project. So if you have any fun spring cleaning tips, you can share them in the comments below. Do you have a closet full of works in progress? Or do you like to go through every season and frog a lot of your projects? Or how do you organize all your swatches? Do you save your swatches? Do you reuse the yarn from your swatches? If you have some spring cleaning tips on how you deal with your works in progress and all your swatches, please leave a comment. I'm always looking for some new ideas and inspiration on how to fully embrace all parts of the knitting process. So thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video.